Hi there, traders. This is Brad Goodwood with today's trading action. All right. Now, the market to me looks not like really confused, but they're waiting for the next proper step. Now, the Fed's come and gone. We saw, saw a spike to the top side afterwards or spike down initially, then spike up and then the clean out, right? But then it just didn't fail to go on with it. So to me, the market is has been bent over a couple of times. And I mean, you know, a couple of false starts with that dollar sell-off. Um, it's, it's almost like they're waiting for one extra event to actually start selling dollars. It's going to happen, right? The, the, the dollar is set to go down. It's just the market has been a little bit baffled of late, trying to guess the positioning of the market and these sorts of things. And that's really slowed things down. But to me, it sets us up for a, a more consistent, longer-term dollar sell-off. Euro higher, sterling, Aussie, Kiwi. Of course, the other central banks, their, um, their interest rate cutting plans are sort of colliding a bit with the Feds, but the Fed has gone first. Now, the yen, we saw it last week. I don't know if you've read any of the articles, but um, a huge amount of money has gone uh, into the yen, like buying yen, right? So to me... It's almost like a bit of a uh, a yen squeeze, long squeeze uh, out of those positions. And now it looks like they're done and we should start to see that go lower as well. So the charts, they look a little bit muddled, right? But if you come back and have a look at the actual global markets, equity markets are showing the exact sign of a half percent cut. The treasury yields in the US are lower, right? So like the rest of the markets are showing the exact signs that they should it's just the dollar has been a little bit distorted because I think it was so telegraphed that the Fed were on a cutting cycle. And then even with the half percent, it hasn't had enough to sort of flush out old positions and get it moving. It's like the whole market sitting short dollars and it's just stalling at the moment. But just be patient. It will come into play. Now, today, what can we look forward to? Well, retail sales figures, right? Now, there's no change in the UK. I think stronger numbers here. Like you've got to start thinking the Fed have cut. So stronger numbers um, in uh, the UK, they're already sort of on hold as far as interest rate changes go. That could give the sterling a little bit of a drive to the top side. We've also got um, uh, some numbers here, retail sales and producer prices. Mainly the retail sales numbers out of Canada are the key ones, right? So just keep an eye on that. The Bank of Canada is under the pump, right? So and, you know, what you look at dollar CAD, this is the hardest part. I was going to say, like, you know, with their interest rate cutting cycle, like it's like what the dollar's doing, what the CAD's doing, and then what oil's doing. It's making uh, a very convoluted mess of dollar CAD. So Canadian retail sales figures, you, if you're looking at the CAD, look at the CAD crosses, right? Don't get into the dollar because it's too convoluted, right? It's probably same with sterling on the UK retail sales figures. Have a look at that as well. Try and identify the pairs that, uh, like the Kiwis are ready to cut, maybe Sterling Kiwi, just off the top of my head. Um, and that's pretty much it. You, you come back and have a look at these interest rate probabilities. We're in a, like a new dimension as far as the markets go, right? The Fed, 56% uh, chance of a uh, cut here. Well, let me just clear that up. 0.25%. Um, I mean, 43% chance, even this far out, another half percent. Because the Fed did say that they're cutting by another half percent before the end of the year. So they either do it in one hit or a couple. I, I'd say I'm going to start leaning towards an aggressive Fed and uh, I like what they're doing. Um, now, usually you go back uh, 20 years, it wouldn't be like this, right? You'd see the Fed cutting, right? And these other ones would be all un no change, no change, no change. And then they'd start to roll. The ECB would go. The Bank of England would go. And then they'd say the smaller econ economies like the Bank of Canada, RBA, RBNZ, et cetera. But they are all sort of on the verge of getting busy. Now, the Bank of England has shifted from a no change, 22%, to a 77% chance of a 0.25, right? So that changes the picture of the retail sales figures. Weaker retail sales figures, that goes up into the 85, 90 range. And it's a, it's a certainty. So out of all the developed countries, the RBA is the one country still on hold. And you know what? The unemployment figures yesterday were pretty good. So that's going to be a longer period of time. You've got to think Aussie against most instruments should be going up, right? At the moment, it's uh, it's doing its best against the dollar. But uh, I can see it up, get up around 70 cents very quickly.
right? And that's two part Aussie strong data, and we we will see this dollar roll over, right? It will happen, right? Because the Fed are on an aggressive cycle. It's just a matter matter of the market flushing out all these crazy stale positions and getting a, a move on. Will it happen today? I don't know, but it'll happen when you least expect it. Maybe Monday, Tuesday next week when there's nothing going on. That's when you start to see the funds, fund managers start to move the markets when there's nothing going on, right? Less volatility, they can get the volume and start shifting it. So we'll see how that plays out. All right, guys, have a good one. All the best. Cheerio.